Hey fellow Pee Wee nerds, welcome to part 3 of doing magic find wrong for science. This time around we added some more quantity and rarity to our character. We also streamlined our time per map by removing Harbinger and by improving our loot filter again to show less junk. We also began collecting the Gambler card as a way of tracking our likelihood of getting an Apothecary. Gambler is about 600 times as common as an Apothecary, so for every 600 Gamblers I get, on average I should get one Apothecary. Let's jump into the breakdown and most importantly, the results. My sections were pack size in unidentified maps, beyond, enraged strongboxes, and additional strongboxes. My scarabs were gilded reliquary, divination, ambush, and cartography, and I ran unidentified maps. The only big atlas changes were removing harbinger. In place of the harbi nodes, I added in some more delirium nodes. I added in some more chance for a delirium mirror for a total of 48% as well as Delirium Monsters making rewards tick faster. This time around, I got from 40% quantity in the last test to 75% quantity on my character, and I did this while keeping my movement speed above 150%, which is really important. I swapped out the bad rarity helmet I was running last time for a triple rarity helmet with the same Eldritch Implicits. I also removed my defensive flasks and added in a rarity flask and a movement speed flask. I swapped out my Lightning Coil for a plus two AoE Thieves Torment for extra quantity. I also made the difficult decision to remove my Calm Spirit. I really like the Rage, but I wanted a Sedema's Touch for the extra 10% quantity. And I managed to get a pair with Despair on here that were not too expensive. I then also removed the random crappy ring that I was using last time. It was just something that I happened to have in my stash. And added in another plus 10 quantity Ventor's Gamble with decent resistances. Adding in more Quantum Rarity gear has made my character feel quite squishy, and I am dying a little bit more, however I'm hoping that the loot that I got is worth it. This time around I got 13 Divines and just over a thousand Chaos. I also got a really nice stack of Exalt, about 21, from one of the Altars. I got a couple of Annals and about 100 Awakened Sextons, which is not too bad. I also got 76 stack decks, mostly from Delirium. From Beyond, I got 7 Tainted Fusings and 6 Mythic Orbs, as well as a chunk of the other currency. And I also dropped a few Eldritch currencies as well. I ended up with a really nice chunk of maps, over 200. I couldn't fit them all in here, so I stuffed some of them into the map rolling tab. I got a good chunk of Scarabs, including a couple of Winged from some Loot Explosions. I ended up with 8 Enlightens, a Dragon's Heart, 2 Fortunate, a Brother's Stash, and 4 Mirror Shard cards. I ended up with 2 Voidborn Reliquary Keys this time, and also a nice chunk of Cluster Jewels, some of which I will roll and sell, and some of which I'll just sell as they are. The total cost for this set of maps was 6,600 Chaos. At the time, Divines were 240 Chaos. So this was about 27 and a half divines. A net profit was just over 8,000 chaos or 33.8 divines. It took me about six minutes to run each of these maps, which is a little bit better than the previous maps that I did, which means I got about seven divines per hour profit. I used Excellence CE to calculate my profits. And one thing I forgot about when I was doing this is that Excellence actually doesn't account for maps. I didn't go in and add the value of the maps to the pool because that would have thrown out the results from the previous two tests but there's actually another 950 chaos worth of maps here as well. This round I got two less seven years bad luck than I did for the previous test, as well as two less dragon hearts, but I did get three extra enlightens. I still haven't gotten an apothecary card, and I've decided to start tracking my odds by using a gambler. I got 320 gamblers during this 48 maps, which is about seven per map, which is actually not very good. You want to be getting at least 10 per map, I put this down to the fact that I was using the unid'd map sextant and I'm not exactly sure what the quantity was on those maps, I didn't track it very carefully, as well as the fact that I did not have a guaranteed delirium orb on each map. I only had 48% chance to get a delirium orb. Raw profit this time was about 12 divines higher than the last 48 map test, which I think is pretty good. I got slightly unlucky with the seven years bad luck, I would have expected a couple more. However. Some of the other drops made up for it, like an extra Voidborn Reliquary Key. 
It also helps that I manage to cut down the average time per map from eight to six minutes, which is still not very fast, it's a bit slow. However, it's a lot better than eight minutes and it means that my divines per hour actually went up significantly. This is getting into the realm of a decent profit per hour. Still not amazing though. Let's end the video with a bit of a gamble. One of the uniques I dropped was a replica dragon fangs black with consecrated path on it, which is a bit crap. So let's divine it. And that is unfortunate. Ellie hit might've been worth something, but the mana reservation tanked. So that is definitely an F. Cheers for watching, and if you'd like to see more Magic Pine videos, let me know in the comments. Hope you find many more apothecaries than I've been finding.